Now, I found something very fascinating that I think many of you will be interested in, and it is this book, Unix for People. This is actually a very old book. Oh, I shouldn't say very old book. Uh, I want to say it was made back in the 80s. Uh, I think it was um, 84, okay? Um, now, this is basically a normie's guide to using Unix. Uh, now, of course, all of this will apply to Linux. There might be some changes over the years, but it's actually, I, you know, I sort of leaf through this book, and it is fascinating. I mean, it's it's nearly. We just opened up to the the section on EQN. If you want to format, uh, you know, math equations in your graph documents, stuff like that. Um, so uh, I, I just found this very fascinating because the technology content, the good technology content on this channel could probably be summed up in a little textbook like this. It's very nice uh, just to show you what they kind of, and again, this is for someone who basically has never used a computer for, before uh, this book, and it's, it's uh, a pretty nice introduction. Uh, so they talk about things like uh, using uh, editing files using the visual editor, that is a uh, VI, that's basically Vim. Uh, so they teach you how to use Vim, they teach you how to use the MS macros in RAW. I, I've actually actually done a series of videos on the MS macros. Uh, you can look up Groff, Luke Smith, and they'll come up. Um, and so that's like, you know, formatting documents and things like that. Um, and all the things you really, I don't know, let's just get into it. It's an interesting book. Um, you know, and it's quirky they have like drawings and stuff like that I'll, I'll go over some of them um so unix is so complicated the secretaries have to teach the engineers how to use it you know anyway so let's get into this uh at the very beginning I, again this is for people who have like never logged on to a computer again but look hey look this old lady can use a uh, unix if she can do it she she's formatting documents in ROF right now check out this base black guy with the command line based Okay, and there's your average Luke Smith uh, viewer down here. Anyway, so let's just get into it, okay? So, um, oh, and here's, they have these cutesy, cutesy little uh, uh, diagrams or, or art stuff all over the place. Rhett, hungry for immortality, decides to write his autobiography on the text processor. And you can see he's using like Roth macros and stuff like that. All right, so at the very beginning, you know, it's just like logging on. I'll skip through some of this. Uh, I, I'm gonna skip through basically all the book, but just to give you an idea. Um, they have like pretty simple, you know, how to use basic commands. So they have like get your date, uh, get who, uh, who's on the system. I mean, these are still commands. Uh, they do have some commands that I don't think exist anymore. For example, there's this command look. Um, and this is for like spell checking, I guess. Like you put in, you feed a word to it and it gives you all the words that look like it in the dictionary or something like that or contain it. So, you know, it's a way of, back in the old days, it's a way of checking for, you know, if you're spelling things correctly, you know, change your password, stuff like this. So this is like basic logging on stuff, but they pretty quickly uh, get you to making files. And the way they teach you to make files is basically just using VI, right? Vim, okay? That's the way, you see a lot of people on my channel, whenever I do a tutorial on something, and I, I'll use Vim to open like uh, a file, uh, you know, these soy devs, they'll be like, no, you can't use Vim, that's too complicated, I can't understand, please use Nano, no one's gonna watch this. Well, they're wrong, and also Vim is like retardedly easy, uh, I don't know what's wrong with you, and anyway, so they, they go through very basic stuff, they tell you, um, you know, use A to go into append mode, then you type stuff, and uh, you know, th they go through like a page of, how do you get out of the typing mode? Well, you press escape. Um, and actually, here's what I like. How do you how do you exit Vim? Not that stupid way they teach you, or VI, not that stupid way they teach you in Vim Tutor where it's like colon, Q, exclamation point, enter. No, just type capital Z, capital Z in normal mode and you exit. Now, I, I actually don't think, I mean, this again is for VI. I don't think this actually works on modern VI. I seem to remember it not, but it definitely works on Vim. That's how I always exit you know, Vim, there's no, I, I, it's so silly, like, dude, think about how much, I, I always have to nag people on this, that is the easiest thing to do, Th doing this to exit, that is so, I don't, I don't know, it's too many, too, you requires two hands, it's just a waste, don't do it, um, anyway, so, they, they go through more basic, I, I want to, isn't there some little, uh, uh, like, art thing, oh yeah, so here is, I know we make fun of people who, Always talk about how they can't exit Vim, but this is the Harry Houdini Escape Award is given to blank this day of blank in the year blank to blank for distinguished and miraculous escapes executed from the append mode, more or less, you know, exiting insert mode or uh, uh, exiting Vim. 
Uh, so whatever, you know, people people have always made jokes about how difficult it is to exit Vim. Um, so basic stuff, you know, ls to show files, and you know they go through some other things on the shell. Uh, let's see, uh, you know, I think they have yeah like hjkl moving around in Vim. Um, pretty quickly, oh yeah, they tell you more Vim commands. So here's you know this this. Uh, that dog catcher's back. Now there's a character I'd like to replace because he's talking. He's pressing R. Get it? You know, replace a character in Vim. Wow, <laughs> wow, guys, upvote this if you know what that's about. That's that's hilarious. Um, so eventually, let's get to the good stuff. All right. So they get to Inroff. Now, if you don't know what this is, you should absolutely know what this stuff is because a lot of people use markup, uh, you know, or Markdown or or, or LaTeX or something to format documents. In case you don't know. There is, in the Unix operating system, including on Linux, on Linux it's called GROF instead of NROF, um, but there is a built-in document formatting system that takes text files and makes PDFs, printable documents, postscript documents, however you want it. Um, and the, it, basically, this book is probably 30% uh, probably learning how to format documents and do stuff like that, which is actually you know, a useful thing to be able to do. And uh, in ROF, of course, ROF is just like so minimal. Uh, it runs immediately. They, they show you how to do basic stuff. I, I'm going to flip. I think they show you an example of what it looks like, uh, just so you guys can get an idea if you don't. I probably skipped right by it. Probably skipped right by it. Give me give me a second. Yeah, we know. You, you guys know we don't do... Uh, I probably skipped right by it twice. Oh, no, here it is. Okay. So this is what it looks like. So you make... Um, a little document like this and all these commands are things like oh this is like center text or you know make uh, spaces between paragraphs or stuff like that so an input file like this formats into something like this where you have centering you have underlines and stuff like that actually I think in modern um, I think in modern rough UL actually I mean obviously it originally was underline I think nowadays it will actually um, italic or italicize text. Or, or may, that might be a difference between inroff and, uh, uh, what is it, trough, trough, or whatever, but they'll get into that later. Um, so basic stuff, removing files, moving files, copying files, all this basic stuff that I think most people uh, sort of get a hankering, not, not a hankering of, an inkling of uh, just basic stuff. Uh, and they list out all the different things, apropos, cat, uh, diction, what is that? Reads through the file name and notes instances of a questionable diction. That's it. That's, I've never heard of that one. So there are some of these that don't exist anymore, but like man, LPR is still around. LPR is to print something out on your physical printer um, or line printer, I guess, back in the old days, whatever. Uh, suggest is doesn't exist anymore. Suggest replacements for a target word. So a lot of this stuff is, is sort of like... Um, uh, like spell checking and stuff. I mean, Vim nowadays just has a spell checker built into it. But uh, okay, so uh, just a little overview. Um, other things. Let's let's skip ahead. Let's skip ahead. Oh, oh yeah, here's here's another little, little cartoon we got to read. Meet the command interpreters. Today, our distinguished guests discuss the meaning of ls. Okay, so Vi command mode says uh, move right and substitute. Inrof says. If you threw in a dot, it'd be a single space. So, you know, it's just the ls means something different everywhere. In the shell, it means list files. And then in a pin mode, it's just typing stuff out. All right. So it's just this cutesy boomer humor. I mean, none of this stuff is actually funny, of course. That would totally destroy the purpose. But you get into more advanced Vim stuff. Let's actually skip to uh, the MS macros because I think, yeah. So the MS macros are more advanced. Uh, and I think they give you an example of this at the end of the chapter. Hold on. Um, so these are like more advanced formatting in uh, ROF. Uh, come on. I should have like bookmarked all of these. That would have made this quicker. I just sort of made... Oh, okay. So here it is. So MS macros are more advanced. You know, you can set more specific stuff as to how you want a document formatted. You know, you got little paragraph rules. And so, for example, all this will be formatted into a document that looks something like this, right? So you have a title, you have uh, sections that are numbered with subsections, you have these margins that you all set, uh, you have things like footnotes, and you know you have a little footer down here. Um, all this kind of stuff is done automatically. Again, this is what like LaTeX would do, or if you have something fancy or something bloated, am I right, like Pandoc, which just like auto-converts th th things through LaTeX. 
Um, you can do all of this kind of stuff just with rough, and it's a lot simpler and, I don't know, nicer. It might, like, the syntax of it might be, ooh, that's counterintuitive, that looks scary, but, you know, that's how it is. Um, get over it. <laughs> um, and I think they also do stuff, I'm gonna skip way ahead, because a lot of the stuff is like, oh, regexes, replacing stuff. Basic kind of command line stuff. I don't think they really do, like, shell scripting, like you know, like, if this, then do that kind of things. Um, but they have a lot of, you know, got Vim options, Vim settings, ignore case. Uh, some of these I don't even know about. Does magic, does that exist? I don't even know. I've never used most of these ignore case that, that at least is, or, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's, let's see. Let's see what else is there in here. So in general, like, the whole book is honestly a pretty good introduction. Like, the, the thing I like about it is that, it's, it's targeted to like doing specific, like specific normie things. Like normies, they just want to get their documents printed out. They just want to do this and that. And that's what it focuses on. Um, and as it, as you go further on, uh, oh yeah, they do. So they, uh, they start on NROF, but they start doing TROF where you can like, you know, it, it's for more advanced printers. Every printer nowadays can do this, but you know, back in the day, it was a weird thing to be able to print like, uh, you know, you, you had to have a, photo typesetter or something like that. I forget what it is. I'm not a boomer. I don't know. But uh, trough ha is more advanced. It can do stuff like this. You can have bolding and, and other things. Actually, yeah, I think trough is the one where, yeah, uh, underlines become italics and stuff like that. So uh, aside from that, oh, it shows you how to make macros and things. Uh, and then at the very end, oh yeah, so they have things like refer. I've done a video on refer. It's how you make bibliographies in Roth. So uh, bibliographies, it's just like using uh, BibLawTech in LawTech. The, they can automatically do bibliographies for you. For example, you have a, um, uh, a bibliography file that has little paragraphs that look like this, where you embed like, oh, here's an author, here's a title, here's all the other information about it. And then you can actually cite this using a refer from your document, and it automatically formats things um, in, uh, in the proper way that it's supposed to. I think, uh, refer, looking, I, I looked sort of at this before, I think refer is actually a lot more advanced now than it was here. Um, but, so that's what your bibliography looks like, and you can format it automatically into, uh, something like this. And of course, I don't think they actually mention, like, in-text citations, but you definitely can do that in modern refer. I don't know if you can back here. Uh, table for making tables, all this kind of stuff. All this kind of stuff is like built in, again, to Roth and thereby into the Unix operating system, uh, including, of course, Linux. And of course, nowadays people have a bajillion other programs, redundant programs that do exactly the same thing built on top uh, of uh, Linux. But here's EQN. I've done a video on this as well. This is like the math formatter. Um, so you can, like this stuff creates an advanced equation or something like that. And this is how you format uh, math stuff and I don't know stuff like that people always complain nowadays I, in my videos you can of course change the font but people always complain about the default font of EQN they're just so used to LaTeX LaTeX you know it does the especially the math stuff actually does look very good out of the box but you can still do this stuff in a uh, uh, graph and you can you can uh, uh, play around with the fonts and stuff like that if you really want either way like that's basically the book um, I just found it really interesting because uh, first off, whenever, I, I know I was talking mostly about the Roth stuff, because it legitimately is difficult to find documentation on Roth nowadays. It's like, it's a program that's not really used that much, and I actually use it for basic documents. Uh, when I make something, I usually uh, put it in Roth, so it's nice to have. Uh, obviously, this covers the MS macros. I've sort of moved on to the mom macros. I still use MS, um, but um, either way, this is just an interesting book. A look at the past. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm glad I found it. Um, just a nice, and it's still in mint condition. I'm not going to mess it up. So, yep, that that's Unix for people. Unix for normies. That's what it would be called in 2021.